the gym. Old stomping grounds. <laughs> Hank Patterson, fly fishing guide. Riley Smith, tight end. Yeah, I appreciate that. Hey, you wouldn't happen to be the kicker. No, tight end. Again, thank you. I'm looking for a kicker for Lithia Ford's fall kickoff sale. But you're not the kicker. No. Yeah. Now nah, the kicker's probably taller. In a lot better shape. So, okay. What uh, position do you play? Tight end. Squats. Yeah. Try it sometime. I may be retired, but I still have finances to manage. With direct deposit and automatic payments, ICCU makes it easy to spend less time banking and more time baking. RowPaint.com, the official paint and coatings company of Boise State Athletics, is going all in this season with an all-star lineup. First up, he led the Broncos to three conference championships and 10 20-win seasons. It's Coach Leon Rice. Next, he's the founder and CEO of RowPaint.com. He played a little basketball in high school on the driveway with his mom. It's Andy Rowe. Oh, no. Want to just paint my house? Now that I can do. When I want Boise State to win, I trust Coach Rice to lead the Broncos to victory. And when I want the best painting and garage floor coating, I trust RowPaint.com to get that job done right. This is Bronco Nation News Live. The best interviews, the most informed opinions, the latest breaking news, all from the top Boise State insiders. Today's broadcast is coming from the Cutwater Spirits Can Cocktail Studios. Check out one of their more than 30 flavors of pre-mixed premium cocktails at your local gas station or grocery store. Cutwater Can Cocktails is perfect for your next game day tailgate party. Now, here's four-time NSMA Idaho Sports Writer of the Year, BJ Rains, with another edition of Bronco Nation News Live. Hey, how we doing, Boise State fans? Welcome on in to a, another edition of Bronco Nation News Live. It is Wednesday. That means our new weekly spot with uh, Johnny Mallory. You hear him weekdays, 3 to 6, 95.3 FM, 1350 AM, KTIK app, KTIK.com, all those great spots. Uh, you can watch him on their daily video segment, and you can watch him right now on uh, Bronco Nation News Live. So, Johnny, uh, a little What's rainy up? outside. Not yeah. great weather today, one of those days, but uh, how's it going, man? It kind of was. I was driving, you know, down 84, driving downtown to the ropaint.com studios like I always do, and sometimes it's nice to get kind of those gloomy, windy, rainy kind of days. It kind of goes well with the World Series, right? It's kind of World Series weather, DJ, yeah. and I know we have a World Series now, and with World Series means, you know, deep in the heart of a college football season and no question, Boise State fans going to get that, I think, on Saturday with Wyoming coming to town. lot to be excited about right now. Let's get after it today. And as a quick aside, you're, you're probably the guy that wants to see the Yankees and the Dodgers in every World Series. You're probably the guy that wants the, the high payroll, high market teams. That, that's more interesting for you. I saw a lot of talk last night about how horrible the World Series is going to be, how bad the ratings are going to be, and how bad Arizona is, you know, in terms of uh, the national brand and all this of baseball. I think it's great, man. You're going to have, I think, nine world different World Series winners in the last 10 years. That's uh, cool. I think that uh, both these teams, have, it's been a long time. Arizona, obviously, 20-plus years. Uh, I got no problem with it, man. I, I like to see cool stories like this, and I'm actually looking forward to this World Series. Okay. Um, it's kind of like you get what you pay for. And this happens, this analogy works in sports all the time. Baseball made the decision 
to do what the other professional leagues in this country were doing, BJ, and that is, hey, let's expand playoffs. These are the games that the fans care about. Let's give them more of that, jack up the prices, let more teams have a bite at the championship. Baseball never did that, and the purists love the fact that, hey, it's a marathon regular season. We're not going to go ahead and all all of a sudden turn the, the race into a sprint for who yeah. gets to win what we're all playing for. Everybody run this massive marathon, and when that's over, well, now you got to run a sprint, and you yeah. get what you pay for, baseball. Uh, you expanded your playoffs. You listened to people who said it. Television networks wanted more playoff games, BJ. You did all that, and yeah. every now and again, you're going to get an Arizona Diamondbacks 84-win team that didn't even score more runs than it surrendered on the year, sneak into a World Series. You get yeah. what you pay for, baseball. And maybe, maybe both times of my lifetime that the Cardinals have won the World Series, they were wild card teams too. So maybe I'm okay with the, the format. But cool. I do think I, I saw on social media, and we'll get to Boise State in a second, but I think the easy way to solve this is uh, they should reseed after the wild card round. So reseed, make that, that, that number one seed – let them play the worst team left uh, in the playoffs uh, after the wild card round. And then yep. uh, if teams want to complain about that buy uh, and having three days off or whatever, let them have the, let the top two teams have a choice. If you want to play in the division series, play in the division series. If you want the rest, take the rest, maybe give them a choice. So we'll see. It was all done so that they could have more money uh, in the TV deal and have more games. And um, maybe you just add more and go straight one plays eight, like they do in the other sports and add another round. Uh, who knows uh, what's going to happen moving forward, but I got no problem with it. Good cool. luck to jo Jordan K's Diamondbacks, and uh, I am uh, excited for that. I think that's going to be pretty cool. Friday night, I believe, is uh, game one. And I'll just tell you, man, watching that first inning in the game last night, you know, first pitch of the game, every pitch, they're waving the towels. Like, there's nothing like playoffs in any sport, but the playoff baseball certainly. And uh, it was a weird feeling. Cardinals last place this year missing out on that. Your Mariners. Uh, missed out on that. So uh, let's, let's get the Mariners. Go to Boise State. Let's, let's get the go. Mariners and Cardinals turned around, man. Come on. Next year. I have year. to deal with the Arizona Diamondbacks. We'll have now played in two World Series. The Arizona uh, Diamondbacks and the uh, Mariners have yet to get there. So, yeah. Uh, uh, go uh, go D-backs and those lifelong <laughs> fans. I mean, you guys have been waiting your whole life for this. Enjoy the moment. Today is a uh, Lithia Ford Wednesday here at BroncoNationNews.com. We appreciate Lithia Ford of Boise, the title sponsor of our pre- and post-game shows for their support of Bronco Nation News. So check out their full inventory of vehicles at LithiaFordBoise.com. A couple of different topics to discuss with you, Johnny. Let's start on the uh, let's start on the quarterbacks. And we found out Monday that the two quarterback system is going to continue. I wrote about it yesterday. Uh, a lot of fans have opinions on this. I don't know if I've actually asked you this, you know, this bluntly or what your thoughts are now with where we're at, but um, do you think they should keep playing two quarterbacks? Uh, yeah, because look, if they, if they would have beat Colorado state, I don't know how much two quarterback conversation we'd still be having. They would have won the game. They're moving on the two quarterback system. As far as winning and losing is concerned worked. So, yeah, I think they're looking on that logic. They were able to put the points on the board they wanted to. The yardage kind of went along with the points to show, hey, indicate that was a good offensive output. We'll take that. We can win with that. We should win games with that output. So they're going to stay with it. I'm okay with that. The weird thing I have is, you know, Talon's the starter, and it feels like the conversation, the narrative is shifting kind of towards, yeah, it's a two-quarterback system, but – Talon's the clear-cut starter, and Mad Dog's going to be the QB2 in this scenario. Cool. You know, we, we've seen that work where you, you kind of have your A and your B, right? One, two. Makes sense as well. But in that case, BJ, you know, I, I, I just uh, – Mad Dog has thrown two out of every three balls, right, in the last two games since they've shifted over to this. Yeah. They're, I mean – Usually in this instance, the, the the one, the A quarterback is going to be the one that's throwing more. Your B is kind of your change of pace, athletic, move around, maybe can do some, you know, some wildcat concepts, read option stuff. They've kind of flipped that, right? The, 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 the QB2 is the one throwing 
more attempts, isn't it? Twice as many attempts Mad Dogs had over TG10. And he's played more snaps the last two games uh, as well. Logan, you were correct. My microphone, I had the wrong input on there, so hopefully it sounds a little better now. Um, hire a tech. Get yourself a JP. He may be for hire. Award-winning journalists still make mistakes once in a while, so I apologize for that, <laughs> uh, Logan. But uh, uh, no, I, uh, it's interesting because basically, what yeah, I agree, Johnny. What the coaches are saying and what they're doing is not has not been the same. And yeah, it's right. almost like it's almost like uh, Taylor Green is the starter, and they let him play out play first and call him the starter to make it you know keep him happy. But yet, then as the game goes on, they're playing the you know Maddox Matson more snaps in the game. So. Um, We'll see what happens. Uh, I mean, Bush Hamden went out of his way to say Taylor Green's a starter. Everyone in the building knows that. Mm -hmm. uh, well, the starter should play more snaps then. Like, let, let's if, if you're the starter, you're the starter. So let, let's see what happens on Saturday. Maybe with the bye week, they are going to simplify some things, get back to the basics. Bush said they'd like to play Taylor, what, 60, 65% of the snaps. I'd like to see yep. it be 75, 80% of the snaps. But the, the one thing is, as people have kind of pointed out, though, Johnny, it's kind of backwards. Usually, you know, usually in your two, not always, but usually in your two quarterback system, the, the change of pace guy that comes in for the play here and there is the running quarterback. Uh, yeah. It's kind of backwards in this situation. So you're bringing in uh, Maddox Madsen when you clearly need to pass the ball on third and long or third down. And um, I know the numbers are a little better. I get it. Uh, but I also thought like Bush Hamden kind of said, like, I understand it. I get it. I know this basically isn't what people want is basically what he said. Like, but he says, the facts are this is what's given us, we think, the best chance. He called it a gut feeling. I don't know if you heard that part, but he called it a gut feeling that uh, he feels this is what's giving them the best chance to win uh, moving forward. And so um, we'll see. I I've made it known. I'm not a huge fan of it. I, I, I wish they would just pick one, either one at this point. I think it should be Talon, but if they wanted to go Madsen at this point, I think playing Madsen 90% of the snaps is better than literally every time it gets to third down, switching quarterbacks, going back and forth. Um, you know, they obviously know a lot more than us, Johnny. We'll see if they've improved this some Saturday, but it has just felt so clunky and out of rhythm the last two games. Like there really hasn't been a concrete plan. Neither quarterback has really found himself in a rhythm. And I mean, for a guy like Taylor Green to have to wonder every other play, uh, oh, is that play good enough? Do I get to stay in? Oh, no, it's third and six, not third and three. I'm out of here. Um, right. I just don't think that does, uh, I don't think that does him a lot of, uh, uh, you know, a lot of good. And and frankly, I don't think they're doing a lot of good for Maddox Madsen either with the way this has been going. He's been coming in and out. And uh, I think they should just pick one of them, either of them. I'm not a huge fan of this two QB system. What I, I could, you know, maybe they make it work on Saturday and I'll change my opinion. I get the stats. They're a little better. They're scoring 30 points a game. Uh, all that. I get it. Um, but, uh, you know, one of those 30 points was thanks to a Andrew Simpson touchdown that or, uh, interception that put him down there at the 15 yard line to let him get to 30. That but, happens. um, I, I just, uh, I just, uh, I, I got, I'm just not quite sold on this yet and they know more than me. So I'm sure that, uh, you know, they have reasons for it and they're, they're, uh, smart guys, but, uh, I can't remember a time Johnny where I don't know about the callers on your show, but I would say it's like 90 to 10 on the, uh, BNN, uh, you know, viewers, and we could even get a poll going maybe to confirm this, like. Nobody really wants the two QB system. A lot of fans are not happy with this. Yeah, um, they don't care. And you know that, you know, Bush doesn't care that the fans don't want a two QB system. I think Mad Dog is loving this, by the way. He's getting to play. Not only that, he's the one that's getting to throw the ball. TG10 just has to deal with the messy run stuff and first down. Hey, time to throw, coach. All right, I'm ready. You know, I mean, Mad Dog has to be loving this role. Um. And and I get a lot of people out there who are who are who are saying, hey, this is Talon's fault. Talon wasn't playing well. You know, he sparked this thing. Had he played better, there would never have it would never would have come to this. Mm -hmm. Even though Mad Dog played well when TG was out with a cramp or whatever that situation was at UCF, where Mad Dog came in and played well. Now, I guess I'll throw it back to you. Are you saying that? Had they just stayed with Talon, he would have been able to continue his development. He would have got better. Obviously, he would have gotten more comfortable. And where you sit right now, had you just stayed with Talon the entire time, you'd be better off. Is that kind of where you're going? Like, do I, I, I yeah. do believe, I, you know, and again, it's my opinion, could be wrong, but in my personal opinion, I do think that. 
they did not give Talon a, a fair enough, long enough leash of being the clear yeah. number one. I, I mean, uh, he, you know, he has some deficiencies, yes, but I personally believe if he had been given more time, if they had worked to to you know play to some of his strengths more in the offense. I mean, they went eight and two with him as the starter last year. They ran the ball the majority of the time. They were able to mix in the pass, do some things. Um, the the formula has worked before. Taylor Green won a bowl game. Uh, you know, got them into the championship game last year. Uh, they went eight and zero in Mountain West play uh, with him as the starting quarterback, I believe it was. Um, so I uh, I just feel like yeah, they were real quick to go to Madsen. Madsen had a couple nice drives, that, you know, in the UCF game, the Memphis game, and all of a sudden it was like, oh, he just has to play and. Um, yes, that's probably, you know, yeah. essentially, yeah. yes. I believe yeah. if they had given, if they had given Taylor green a little bit longer time, he would have proven to be serviceable enough in the passing game. I don't think they run him enough. I don't know why they don't run him more. Um, but yes, I, I, and this is nothing against Maddox Madsen. I believe that he can do some things. And like I said, at this point, I might even be happier if they just played Madsen, just play somebody and stop going back and forth. Um, but yeah, that is the, the, that is my overall probably theme of this that I don't think Matt, I don't think Taylor green got a fair enough shot to be QB one. What do you think about the one and O mentality that this staff and this program is living in? I totally get it. I mean, they're, if, if they lose to Wyoming, let's say Wyoming comes in and beats them 38 to three. Can you imagine what's going to happen there? I mean, uh, this team, this is a big win. I, I, I'm sorry, a big game for both teams, by the way. Wyoming is in the same exact spot as Boise State this season. They want exactly what Boise State wants this season. So I love the storyline there yeah. uh, for, for this Saturday on that. It, it, it's big time, BJ. But um, because the other branch, and it's a big, fat branch on the story of this quarterback tree is what's next. Like, Who's staying? Who's going? Both staying, both going. And is this staff doing maybe what it feels it needs to do in order to preserve some of that? Or it feels to me like, hey, it's a one and all mentality. We're not thinking about who's going to jump in the transfer portal or anything right now. We can't do that. We need to beat Wyoming. Okay, like it, it feels like there, uh, there, there, there's that going on right now. What are you seeing? What are your 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 uh, your viewers commenting on as far as the future goes with these two guys? Well, I'll say this first. I knew that uh, Johnny Mallory was always my second favorite Mallory. Uh, we've got uh, a nice comment here in the chat from our favorite Mallory, Patsy Mallory, uh, chiming in against the two quarterback system. It has shown it doesn't work consistently nor benefit either quarterback, Patsy. Right on, man. Uh, right, right on. Love it. I love it. BJ, stop doing that, man. Appreci your mom's watching the show, man. Appreciate yeah. it. She's in Arizona. What's up, Patsy? She's How a subscriber doing? of uh, BNN as well. So we appreciate it. Uh, we appreciate it, Patsy, for for watching the show. There and folks are agreeing. Folks are agreeing with her in the chat. Uh, I do think that's part of it, Johnny, and maybe that's something we continue here in ninety seconds after a quick commercial break. But what happens? How much of this decision is based on next year in terms of keeping quarterbacks happy? Who is leaving? Is the starting quarterback for next season still even on the roster? Uh, I think that's a huge part of this whole decision. We now have the poll up on YouTube. Are you in favor of the two-quarterback system, or would you rather they just pick one? Uh, you can vote now in the uh, YouTube chat, and uh, we'll get to that in 90 seconds. Don't go anywhere on Bronco Nation News. All Bronco Nation news broadcasts come from the Cutwater Spirits Canned Cocktail Studios. Check out one of their more than 30 flavors of premix premium cocktails at your local gas station or grocery store. Cutwater Spirits, perfect for your next game day tailgate party. Our title sponsor is RowPaint.com. For all your commercial, industrial, residential painting needs, check out RowPaint.com. Don't forget about their concrete coatings. Transform that ugly concrete slab on your back patio in your garage in just one day. Contact rowpaint.com for a free estimate today. The official paint and coatings company of Boise State Athletics and our title sponsor at Bronco Nation News is rowpaint.com. Idaho Central Credit Union has been helping members achieve financial success for more than 80 years. There's an ICCU branch on almost every corner, but the closest is in your pocket with free e-branch mobile and online banking. See why more than 500,000 members love ICCU and join one in four Idahoans by making the switch today at ICCU. Dot com.
Since 1984, Ridley's Family Markets has prided itself on being a hometown food and drug store that employed value members of the local community. Ridley's Family Markets has 13 locations in the state of Idaho and many more in the surrounding states. Download the new Ridley's app to your smartphone. Get savings up to 40% off at the checkout line and find a location near you at shopridleys.com. Former Bronco Matt Bowsher is once again the number one ranked realtor in the Treasure Valley. No home is too big or too small for Matt and his team. Let them fulfill all your real estate needs at BowsherRealEstate.com. All right, Johnny, we got the poll going on uh, YouTube. Folks can come in there and chat. Just simple yes or no question. Do you like the 2QB system? I'm curious what the results are going to be uh, of that moving forward. I, I feel like the majority is is not in favor of it. Um, but, you, you know, you mentioned taking this a step further now, and they're kind of committed to this at this point. Um, I think this is an obvious question, but you believe that both Green and Madsen are not on the roster next season, right? Oh, if both of them are on the roster? Well, man, one of the two is gone. Would you agree? Sure. Been, I mean, there's still we still got to see how this is going to finish. But I would say at this point, yeah, one of one of the two are probably gone because good for Maddox Madsen. He's probably felt that he can start somewhere close to this level. Now, it, it, it it's tough too. I mean, you got to have a place to play. I mean, where does Mad Dog want to go? Realistically, what are his options? So there's a lot that we need to talk about on that. Mark Moss, uh, avid viewer. We appreciate Mark for chiming in. Coaches aren't thinking about next year. If this doesn't work, they won't have a job next year, uh, here at least. Uh, they're doing what they feel is best, even if we may not agree. So uh, coaches, yeah. jobs on the line, Johnny, just trying to win the game. You agree with that? Yeah, absolutely. That's why it's the one and oh mentality. That's where this staff is right now. And that was both, uh, both, both Mark and the other guy make a ton of sense. I mean, that's where this coach, coaching staff is right now. Um, they need to win against Wyoming. Nothing else matters as far as, uh, you know, keeping this roster intact right now. Hopefully they can get to the point where they can develop a little bit of a cushion there, BJ, where they can start to, you know, put some of the pieces of the puzzle ahead as well, which I know staffs like to do. But uh, right now, yeah, one and oh mentality. And uh, when you're three and four, uh, that's the neighborhood you're living in, right? This yep. is why we can't have nice things, right? We're losing games that we shouldn't. I mean, the, the, the Colorado State thing's the worst. I mean, that's a damn win. And uh, so they got to get back on track, and they need to find a way to beat a good Wyoming team. For Wyoming standards, you follow Wyoming, you have for a long time. You pay attention, you follow that program. I think there's a pretty good version of Wyoming. I mean, this team plays tough defensively. The front seven, they are stout. They have a veteran quarterback who doesn't make a ton of mistakes. They run the ball. Uh, I don't know, man. Some stuff to look at. But they do have their weaknesses as well. Yeah, you look at the stats and they don't jump off the page at you offensively or defensively. Um, they're certainly not one of the more high-powered offenses, but you look at the games they've played, man. They were hanging with Texas in the fourth quarter in Austin. They were they had a chance to take a late lead on a field goal down there at Air Force and lost that game. Uh, and those are their only two losses. They've got a win over Texas Tech. I mean, uh, you look at the record and what they've done on the scoreboard, it, it's pretty impressive. And and they always come in here and play a tough game. I remember the one 17-9 kind of ugly game, I think. Think it was when Josh Allen came in here one year. Um, they've never won on the blue, though. I think they have a potato bowl victory, but I don't think they've ever won against Boise State on the blue. And that's kind of yeah. one of the streaks that they're trying to trying to end this year. Um, I do want to talk about the running back situation before we get out of here, Johnny. But I do have another question for you first. Um, the the you know three and four, the one and zero oh mentality. You know that's kind of the rallying cry this week. I'm writing about it uh, either today or tomorrow. And I know fans kind of roll their eyes. That's fine, but like the the kind of rallying cry and the, the motivating thing for these final five games, Johnny, is that they, as crazy as it sounds, still control their own destiny here in the Mountain West race. And if they were to somehow figure this out, somehow get hot, they would still be in the Mountain West championship game if they win these final five games. Now, is that likely? No. Is that probable? No. Is that probably, a, what, a 20% chance, if that? I mean, that probably yes. But if you're a player in that locker room, if you're a coach trying to motivate these players, they can – put the seven games they've had behind them. They had the bye week, start fresh. And if you win these five games, you're in the, the conference championship. So uh, looking at these five games, what kind of chance do you give my guess for, for that? And then just, in, just to get to a bowl game, I guess, six wins. What do you, what, what's the record you think here, the final five games? You know, it's going to be interesting. Like I'm living in a one and O mentality with this team right now, BJ. Like uh, if, if this team loses to Wyoming, then I'm not going to pick them to beat Fresno. 
Yeah, I don't think they'll beat Fresno. If they beat Wyoming and look good, I'll give them a shot in Fresno. It really is week to week, uh, right? It really is one and oh. It depends how they look against Wyoming. I mean, I was trying to look at that a couple days ago, like, you know, four and one, three and two. I think I was talking to Prater about it, one of our pre show meetings. He was like, dude, you know, it, it, it's going to change week to week based on how they play. Like, again, what's my, what was my scenario? This would never happen. But if Wyoming comes in there and wins 38 to three. Where's the program there? I, I'm not going to pick them to, 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 to defeat Fresno. So, um, the one thing that they can know, it's open for business where they want to go, which is the Mountain West Championship game slash, what is it, the Gronk Bowl now? They want to get to the Gronk, BJ. And for, <laughs> for, for that to happen, those doors are still open. Yeah. But there's so much work that has to be done um, outside of the house, right? We need to work our way to get there. Luckily for us, we haven't messed up so much to the point this year that that door is closed. We can still get in there. We can still get that. But, hey, man, let's just focus on the now. Let's not even think about that anymore because we've obviously proven what we've been doing isn't good enough to get us there. Hey, good news for Boise State is Caleb Williams probably won't play in the L.A. Bowl. So I think that uh, when, when they meet up with them in, in the Gronk Bowl, they won't no have to chance. worry about Caleb Williams. So No chance. Yeah, I don't know if Caleb Williams will play past Halloween. Like, it's crazy. Oh. How these kids how these kids think these days. It's unfortunate, man. Uh one more quick 90 second timeout, and then I want to finish up talking about George Helani, his impact, what that means for this offense. Don't go anywhere. We'll be right back. Bronco Nation News is sponsored by Tommy Alquist and Ball Ventures Alquist, Idaho's premier commercial real estate development company. BVA projects specialize in office, retail, flex, medical, and industrial spaces located at some of the most strategic and visible locations in the valley. Need a developer? Looking for new space? Think BVA. At BVA, we are Idaho's developer. The Nicolaisen family and SON management have proudly been operating Taco Bell restaurants in and around the Treasure Valley since 1969. One of the first to make a seven-figure donation to the Lyle Smith Society. They've also stepped up their support at Boise State Athletics with the Taco Bell men's and women's basketball endowed scholarships. The Nicolaisen family and SON management have committed at least $310,000 by 2026. Get more information on their financial support at Boise State Athletics and find information on applying to work at Taco Bell at TacoBellWorks.com. Lithia Ford of Boise is a proud supporter of Boise State Athletics and the official car and truck of the Broncos. Lithia Ford of Boise supports Bronco student-athletes through NIL deals, including providing Ford vehicles to Taylor Green and Riley Smith from the football team and Paige Barsh from the volleyball team. Rain's family purchased RF-150 from Lithia Ford. Couldn't be happier with the purchase. Check out the all-electric F-150 Lightning or the electric Mustang Mach-E at Lithia Ford and make sure to check out their full inventory of vehicles at LithiaFordBoise.com. The Blue and Orange Store is the perfect spot to get all your gear for your next Bronco game. The Blue and Orange Store has official Nike apparel, including jerseys, shirts, sweatshirts, jackets, hats, and more. Wear what the Broncos wear and get it at the Blue and Orange Store, the second floor of the Boise Town Square Mall, or get free shipping on a $40 order online at TheBlueAndOrangeStore.com. By the way, Johnny, we're at uh, 68% to 32%, so about 2-1 to one, uh, folks in favor at this point of uh, just sticking with one quarterback, uh, at least from the fan perspective. It kind, of, kind of about what I thought, but uh, we'll see how that chat develops. You can get your vote in there on the YouTube channel. Make sure you subscribe to YouTube uh, as well, both on the Bronco Nation News YouTube and the KTIK YouTube. They do a daily video segment as well there on KTIK. You can check them out. Uh, from the rowpaint.com studios uh, there at the uh, downtown location. Uh, all right, final three or four minutes here. Uh, tell us about George Helani's return. Again, we need to temper this. They never actually said he was playing on Saturday. They just said he's practicing. It's sounding like he could return. Uh, Andy Avalos was asked specifically, is he playing on Saturday? And he kind of smiled and said, good to have him back at practice. Um, so we'll wait and see if he does come back. I wouldn't expect him to get 25 carries in his first game. Um, but what do you think a healthy George Helani down the stretch could mean here for the offense? You have to think the offense gets to another level with a healthy George Helani. He's a good football player. The plan was to use them both. They didn't have an opportunity to execute that plan past a half in Seattle, right? I mean, I'm intrigued by how they're going to do this, especially with the season Ashton is having. Going into the year, you still didn't know. 
that Ashton was going to be on an all American level this season, right? You were wondering, okay, is it 60, 40, you know, are we still going to use, how are we going to use them? Now that you know, the season Ashton is having, you can play George off of that. And I hope Bush does that. I think he will. And uh, it won't be this week though. Again, yeah, uh, people are acting like George Helani is playing this week. We don't know that. We just know he's back at practice. He's practicing. Typically, if you're full go practice, you're able to play. Even that said, with his history, I don't think you push him in the water. I think you put the toes in the water first, BJ. Yeah. Feel this out a little bit. But moving forward, like you asked, yeah, I mean, it opens up a lot of stuff, and you'd hope that they can get they can get this dub against Wyoming on Saturday and then continue to incorporate George Halani into this situation, which, I mean, you look at this offense and I know it doesn't feel as dynamic as it maybe looks on paper. I mean, in the mountain West, I think they're third in yards per game, maybe fourth, something like that, but they moved the ball scoring there about mid level, right? BJ. I yep. mean, what does Halani do to that? Does he bump you up here or there? And, yeah, I mean, I, I think that's uh, that could be the driving force. If this thing's going to get turned around, and at the end of the year, the fan base will be, I guess, like it was last year. Not elated, but not pissed off. Hey, we, we you lost the conference championship game, but you won your bowl game. Ten wins, check. I mean, you checked a lot of boxes on last season. For that to happen this year, you're pretty much – going to have to run the table and if that's going to even be in the realm yeah healthy george helani helps that massively in my opinion yeah no doubt go back and watch as i talked about with jay tuss yesterday go back and watch the first couple drives of the washington game the first two plays of the season they had george helani and ashton genty out there together and then on the third play george helani got hurt so they did have a lot of this offense i think uh built around having both them out there together I think that could add an element to this offense. And then I also think just giving uh, Ashton Genty, uh, you know, an extra player two off here and there where George Lani can take even four or five, six carries a game, which might uh, ease the workload on him, I think is going to be uh, huge down the stretch as well. So what do we got today on Idaho Sports Talk? Uh, we're packed today, man. Actually, uh, Davis Harson and the Eagle Mustangs quarterback, number one team in the state, BJ. I believe we're talking to him and uh, – Jason Eck, I know this is Bronco Nation news, but uh, Idaho Vandal head coach Jason Eck stopping by. We got some good stuff that uh, we're going to talk about today. So uh, Four Idaho coaches Idaho. as well, Nate Potter, James Montgomery, Kane Ione, and Demario Warren all talking to the media today, so I'm sure you'll have some clips with that. JP, Bob, Prater, Johnny, 3-6, to six, Idaho Sports Talk. Make sure you check it out today. Prater in the ballgame, 95.3 FM, 1350 AM, and online as always, ktik.com and uh, the KTIK app. Appreciate you, Johnny, as always. Appreciate everybody for checking us out. Thanks for JP to help getting us on the air. Go subscribe, BNN YouTube. It's free. It's easy. We'd love to have if you're watching on Facebook or Twitter. Start switching over to YouTube uh, in the coming days. And uh, try to stay dry out there with the rain. Have a great rest of your day. And uh, we'll talk to you guys later. Bronco Nation News Live here at BroncoNationNews.com.